Welcome to writing lesson number two on task one, describing a chart or table. Before you start this lesson, you will need to have the following to hand. Your training booklet, a pen or pencil, a rubber, lined paper and a timer set for 13 minutes for practice one and again for 20 for practice two. You can follow the lesson in your training booklet where you will find all the writing tasks, example answers and the writing answer sheets. After this lesson you will have an understanding of what to expect in writing task 1 in which you need to describe a graph or chart. You will have a clear overview of the task and have learned some tips and strategies on how best to approach the task. Also, you will have a chance to practice using authentic tasks and compare your answers to model answers. Now we'll have a look at how task one is marked. It is marked by examiners and you are given band scores. They use marking criteria which is partly accessible for the public and which you can find in your training booklet. There are four criteria for the task. There's task achievement, cohesion and coherence, vocabulary and grammar. And we will look at this criteria and its relevance to the writing task in this lesson. Each marking criteria is given a score, but you won't see what score for you got for this task, but you will get one overall score which is made up of eight individual scores from task one and task two. As you can see here, the candidate got a 5 for task achievement, a 7 for cohesion and coherence, a 6 for lexical resource or vocabulary and for grammar, which would give him an overall score of 6. Task 1 can either be a graph, a chart or a table in which you have to describe the main trends and make comparisons if relevant. It could also be a map or a plan which you would need to describe and compare the differences between the different maps or describing a process such as how a machine works for example. In this lesson we are looking at the graph, table or chart description. In this first task you have to describe a chart a table or a graph in 150 words. You will need to use appropriate vocabulary for describing trends and you can find this vocabulary in your training booklets. You need to plan and structure your writing to help you write in a way that you can finish in the 20 minutes, including all the information you need and to get a good score and to make sure you have enough words. Now we're going to look at how to do this and practice. First of all, now we're going to practice together and first of all we're going to look at how to structure your writing and how long to spend on each stage. I have given you some recommended timings for completing these stages. They are very rough and you might find you need more or less time for each. Firstly I will present the steps here to follow and then we'll go through each step in more detail and practice together after. First of all let's look at the task in your training booklet. The first thing you have to do is to look at the task carefully. Read it very carefully including the actual chart, table or graph itself. Then decide what is the overview, what are the main features. Um, you should take about a minute to do this and don't forget you're only thinking about it here, not actually writing anything. Then you need to take about a minute to write a short introduction. Then you can take three minutes to write an overview, 13 minutes to write the main body, one minute to write a conclusion and the last minute to check your writing. Now we'll go through all these stages in more detail. First of all, you need to look at the, carefully at the task. Decide what's it about. Make sure you take time to understand what the diagram is showing and that you're not reading something incorrectly. Then you can decide what is the overview. If you hold the page away from you, sometimes you can see the overview better. This may sound an odd thing to do, but try it. It only works for charts and graphs though, not tables. 
That way you don't focus on the numbers. Then you need to choose the main details and the main features. Here you have to choose the most significant features, but don't describe everything. Let's look at some ideas together. First of all, what's it about? Take a little bit of time to look at the chart and decide what's it about. Here it shows how many men and women were in full and part-time education in the UK in three periods. Then you have to decide what the overview is. Again, take a little bit of time to decide what that is. In general, you could say here there are always more people in part-time than full-time and numbers for both sexes increase in full-time education. Lastly, you have to choose or decide what are the main features. So again, I'll give you a little bit of time to look at that. The start and the end figures are significant here for both sexes and education types, highest and lowest overall. All of these things are important in order to get the score you need. So let's just go through those points again. First of all, you need to make sure you understand what the chart is about. Then you need a clear overview to get a score of over five in task achievement. And lastly, you have to include numbers and the main features to score over a 5. Now you should write a short introduction and you should include what the graph shows, where it is and when it is. So it's really important to include the what, where and when. Make sure you include all the relevant information and if there are two diagrams you need to write a short introduction to both. I will give you one minute now to write an introduction. You could write something like this. This bar chart represents the number of men and women in part-time and full-time education in Britain for the years 1970-71, 1980-81 and 1990-91. Now, now you need to write the overview. I'd like you to take three minutes to write a short overview. Please remember, don't include any numbers or data yet. That comes in the main part. What's important is that you get a nice overview, a clear overview of what the task is showing. So what the table, the chart or the graph is showing. I'll give you three minutes to do that.
This is an example of what you could write. Other answers are possible, of course. Overall, there are far more people in part-time than full-time education, and the number of women studying both full and part-time increased the most. It is very important to write a clear overview. You should not include any numbers or data. If you don't have an overview, then you will not get more than a five in task achievement. Now you have to write the main body. You have to include the main features that you have chosen and you need to support those with data and numbers from the chart. So for example, you need to say things like, numbers for men rose dramatically from 3,000 to 20,000 in the first five years. You have to use appropriate vocabulary and a good range of grammatical structures. You can organize this however you like, either into men and women, men in one paragraph, women in the next, or you could organize it into part-time and full-time education. It is up to you. The structure or cohesion and coherence will come automatically here as long as you follow the plan outlined in this lesson. You can set your timer now to start at 13 minutes and in that time you can write the body of the task. If you finish before then, just go to the next slide. We will check your answers after you have written the main body and the conclusion. You can pause the video lesson now and start your timer. Now you're going to write a short conclusion. You're going to take one minute to write this. I'll give you one minute now and then we will check your answer. This is an example of what you could write. Other answers are possible. In conclusion, there are significant differences between the two sexes and studying full or part-time. The conclusion is not very important, but it does end your writing in a neat and tidy way. However, if you don't have time, it's okay to leave it out. Now, now I'm going to give you a minute to check your writing. You need to check for spelling mistakes, legibility, which means that you have to be able to read your writing, and punctuation. If you've added anything after you've finished writing, make sure it's easy to find. I'll give you one minute from now. Now we're going to read three examples in your training booklet. 
and while you're reading them you can answer the following questions. What is wrong with example A? What is wrong with example B? And what is wrong with example C? Don't forget there might not be anything wrong with one or more of the examples. Then you can decide which in your opinion is the best. If there is anything wrong with them they are not grammatical or lexical mistakes. You can take as long as you need to read through the exercises, but don't spend too long doing it. When you're reading through them, just press pause on this video and start the video again after you've finished and we'll go through the answers together. So, what is wrong with example A? It doesn't have an overview. Example B has got an overview, but it hasn't got any data or numbers in the main body, which would mean it can't get more than a 5. And C, well, there's nothing wrong with C, which also means that it is the best answer, as it has a clear overview, an introduction, and highlights the main feature features and includes data to support it. Now what you can do is just compare your writing to the answer in example C. Now go to practice 2 in your training booklet and you're going to practice writing a task 1 on your own in the set time of 20 minutes. So first of all you need to go to the practice task and set your timer for 20 minutes. During the time that you're writing you can pause this video and restart it again when you have finished. Don't forget to follow the guidelines on the timings given. You may refer to that while you're writing. Once you've finished, you can compare your answer to the model answer in your training booklet. If you would like feedback on any of your writing, please don't hesitate to contact us. That is the end of this lesson task on task one. Now, after a short quiz. That is the end of lesson two on task one graph description. Now, after a short quiz, you can go on to lesson three, which is on task one again, but this time on writing a map or plan description.